So the reason why I'm here is because Nanali is away in Hong Kong and she's visiting her, visiting her mom and she's having a lovely time. So I think we just sent her like best wishes, Nanali, for her lovely job. Thanks, honey. Thank you. So I am just here humbly as a servant to fill in the void. I don't know if we can ever take the space of Nanali. So um, that's the first thing. And secondly, I want to say thank you for coming, first of all. I really appreciate it. I wasn't quite sure if you were talking just me and the computer. <laughs> So funny. Um, and thirdly, I just want to say, okay, so Natalie asked me what I'd like to speak about, and I decided to give a talk on food. First of all, because I love eating. <laughs> Who doesn't? And it's actually interesting because it's directly after Christmas. So I don't know about you guys, but I think Christmas is a real time where we, um, I would say, probably overindulge in all the naughty things, which are delicious. Um, so January the 10th, now is kind of a time where people set New Year's resolutions and want to lose weight and get fit and join gyms. And it's interesting because I was checking the kind of statistics of the people who make commitments in January and lots of people buy gym memberships in January and buy, I think by, it's like the first week in February, a 70 or 80% of them don't go to the gym <laughs> because that's what people, that's what we do as, as people, we, our intentions are pure but then the consistency and the kind of um, dedication to follow through and keep doing things tends to tends to to weaken. So the talk is about how eating or what we ingest affects our mind and our body and our spirit. And I was just thinking like, you know, as we try to live in, in a yogic way, like what, what, what is our, our goal when we live in yoga? It's because we want to have a lovely life that's full of peace and we want to have fun. And we want to be kind. But basically, when we are not conscious of how we eat or what we eat or how we and the times we eat and how it affects our body, it can definitely affect <coughs> not only our body, not only our mind, but definitely our spirit. So when we think about food, many different emotions can come up when we think of food. Other people, when they think food, they can think fear of putting on weight or fear of you know, there's many different, obviously, diseases when it comes related to food, like anorexia, bulimia, and stuff like that. So I just, for a moment, I want you to, first of all, think about what you put into your body, okay? What you put into your body. What do you think the two most important things that you need to put inside of you is from a physical point of view? What would you think they would be? Water. First is oxygen. Mm. Yeah, because after three minutes, you would die if you don't breathe. <laughs> Um, and as people living in the yoga world, we know how important breathing is and that we use uh, pranayama, which is one of the eight limbs of yoga and breathing and uh, pranayama is one of my favorite actually yoga modalities. Um, as you know, because I, I love teaching breathwork classes, but so let's just uncross our legs for a second. Let's just take three deep breaths. So cross your, uncross your legs, put your shoulders back. You can close your eyes if you want to or open them, whatever suits you. And just relax your shoulders, get yourself nice and comfortable. Take a slow, deep breath into your nose and expand your lungs and your abdominal area. Hold the breath. Now open your mouth and sigh. Let's do it two more times. Inhale deeply, expand. Hold the breath. Open your mouth and exhale, exhale. And one more time, inhale. Now when you can't take any more in, take one more extra, pull more oxygen in, and then exhale. And slowly you can open your eyes. Very simply, oxygen, air, this is what we need to live on. Um, many of the very devout yogis, not the ones who basically live in the Western world, they can actually live on air because it's prana, it's life force. I wouldn't actually recommend that because I think we do need to eat and drink some things, but there is yogis who can live on air, live on prana, which is really interesting. Um, wouldn't be my choice, but uh, that's theirs. And the second thing is water. So our body is 75% water, our skin is 82, our brain is 90% water and I'm a huge water advocate. Um, and basically, 
sometimes when people feel hungry, it's really because they're thirsty. So they say, how much water should a person drink? Most people don't drink enough, but it's your body weight divided in, like divided in half in ounces. That's what the recommended water daily dosage is. So if you're, say, let's say you're 80 kilos, you divide it by two and you drink that 40, you drink, drink that in ounces. But I would just say, listen to your body. The thing about yoga is, whether it's physically or mental or spiritual yoga, is the first is awareness of things. So if you are aware that you need to drink more water, you, you will. If you find yourself getting tired, you can't concentrate, it's because you, you're obviously dehydrated. So water is super important, air is super important. And just for a moment before we go into really how the food affects the body and the mind, I just want to bring attention to the body. It has trillions of cells, trillions of cells. And it's actually a magnificent piece of equipment, the body, when you look at it. You know, we have so many systems that work in it. We obviously have our heart and lungs, our cardiovascular system, and like the heart pumps the blood around the body, even when we're asleep. Who does that? You're sleeping and your heart is still going, you're still breathing. It's kind of cool, isn't it, really? Mm. Um, and then obviously we have the endocrine system, all your hormones, very important for us. It's all ladies, by the way, the people on Zoom are all ladies in this room, you know, menopause and with stuff like that. So the endocrine system, obviously we have so many hormones We are in our pineal gland, we have our hypothalamus, our thyroid gland, all the glands, the adrenals that release cortisol if we're stressed, um, all of the female or, um, hormones like estrogen and progesterone. So it's a, it's a big thing, the endocrine system. So basically, our body is always working together in harmony. You have the muscular system, the bones. That's why we do Hatha Yoga. All these systems work in total harmony with each other. And when we eat and drink in the correct way, and not only what we eat and drink, what we actually ingest, what we read, what we watch on TV, who we spend time with, what we listen to, what we listen to. Do we listen to gossip? Do we watch the news before we go to bed? Do we prefer to watch documentaries that are going to benefit our soul and our spiritual growth? Or do we tend to watch things that disturb our mind? That affects how we ingest everything, actually. And also, when we're eating and when we're cooking, how we feel at that moment can also affect the vibration of what we're eating. So if we're in a happy mood, and we're cooking for our friends or we're going out for dinner or having a nice lunch with our friends at the beach and we're in good spirits, then you're ingesting that lovely food and it's giving you positive vibrations in your body. If you're angry at your partner or you're really not having a good day and you know maybe you're worrying or you're stressing about something in your mind while you're cooking food or eating food, you're not really eating consciously then because your energy is going into those emotions and those feelings, which actually, when you digest the food, that goes into your digestive system and that energy gets transported to all of the cells in your body, which can cause problems in your hormones. So let's talk about for a moment about the digestive system and how we actually eat. Um, Swami Satyadananda actually wrote this book called The Healthy Vegetarian, which I am going to refer to a little bit later on because I've read it twice actually a couple of years ago and i read it over the last couple of days to kind of bring myself up to speed and some really interesting things in there but he was saying that when we eat eating actually starts before we even eat the food so when we look at the food and we see the color is what's on the plate or we get the smell of the delicious homemade <laughs> some people are smiling because we know yeah the smell of delicious food when you're hungry or the look of a delicious salad or something lovely so that's when it starts and then obviously it goes into the mouth when you you have 32 teeth in your mouth and when you chew the food basically it's really important that you chew the food quite well i'm not so good at doing this because everything i do seems to be quite quick so i'm still learning but to eat your food uh, slowly and to chew the food correctly because when you do that you release enzymes in your saliva enzymes and basically they break down the food in your mouth and then when you swallow the food and it goes down the esophagus actually it's actually already been 
a little bit digested, some of the foods. And then it goes obviously into the stomach and the stomach has hydrochloric acid in that. It breaks down all of the different fats and proteins and carbohydrates and vitamins and minerals in the body. And then the energy from that food is dispersed through the bloodstream. And in between that, we have the liver and the gallbladder and the spleen and the kidneys all filtering out the things that are going, that needs to be filtered and cleaned out. And then wherever it's not used is obviously excreted when we go to the toilet. So without being rude, but go, your, the quality of your toilet, your number one and your number two, is actually a really good indication of your health. Because if you think of your body as a clean channel, even from a spiritual point of view, if you're clean and then you drink water and you have salads and you have juices and you have soups and it goes through the body, the throat, the hormones, and it goes out, the body's going to absorb all the goodness from that food. And wherever it's left over, because that will always be waste products, has to be excreted. So the color and smell of your urine should be maybe white but maybe a little tiny bit yellow depending on the time of the day when you wake up in the morning you're mainly dehydrated it could be a little bit yellow um but if your if your urine is mainly clear it's a good sign if your urine is yellow and a little bit smelly it means that your body and the inside is toxic yeah as well with the food when you go to the toilet the number two also important to look at the consistency of that the, the yogis say that when you eat food especially if it's vegetarian, a little bit different if you're eating meat with it. But if you're vegetarian and you're eating fruits and vegetables a lot, you should go to the toilet like after every meal. So maybe three times a day, two or three times a day, really to have everything. If your channels are working clearly, you will go to the toilet quite regularly, which is interesting. So um, that's about the body. And then I just wanted to talk a little bit about actually um, some of the... I watched a podcast actually yesterday on a podcast called Zoe. It's really interesting, Z-O-E, and there's doctors on there, Dr. Tim Spector and another side, um, doctor of nutrition. And for 20 years, all they do is test people and how food affects them in different ways. It's really, really interesting. So I was in my pajamas taking notes on what they were saying. So there's actually there's seven main points and the podcast is about in 2024, what is the most recent research when they study nutrition, food, diet, and what the right thing to do is, what can you do in 2024 that may be slightly different to the previous years? And I thought that was kind of interesting. So basically what they are saying is, just give me a second. So he's, these top doctors have tested hundreds of thousands of people in all different tests, okay? And the first thing they're saying is, basically cut out any of these calorie controlled diets as we know, have been a little bit on the forefront, has been in the past, been used a lot. And the reason why is because when you want to eat consciously, if you're going to start weighing everything and trying to be anal about what things are and everything, it, it can be very consuming. And actually, it's not really that important because the body is quite clever. If you're hungry, your body will want to eat. When you're not, not hungry, your body won't want to eat. I will get to different times, like different kind of eating zones that you can eat in and stuff like that. But <laughs> they said to cut out this calorie calorie counting that it's actually not so healthy. Obviously, you need to use common sense. You're not going to eat all your calories and chocolate. You know, it's obviously important to have plants and fruits and vegetables and legumes and beans and that kind of stuff, healthy things. But to cut out cut out the calories, um, and then also he they said that the second thing was. I thought this was interesting that fat is your friend because we're told that fat is bad right but there's different types of fat we have good fats which are like avocados olive oil nuts seeds and um, coconut oil all the kind of oily things oily fish if people are pescatarians um and then you have what's called bad fats or fats that fats that you know that when you don't you go to the supermarket and you walk down the aisles and everything is red and yellow and in packets they're usually inside those <laughs> the ones that you need your sunglasses to walk by the aisle they're really you know you go, you go into a supermarket and you see all those colors and you're like wow so anything that's processed like that or cakes biscuits um chocolate things like that have a lot of hidden mono um, saturated and polysaturated fats inside them and they're not the healthiest to have no in fairness they usually take taste quite delicious and the reason why they taste delicious is because it's actually quite addictive eating those sort of things and in this research they they, they tested people and let them let them eat 
whatever they wanted and other ones who were like more on a kind of a healthy diet and they found out that people that ate whatever they wanted and processed food and fatty food tended to eat 50 percent more food because of all the chemicals and all the additives it's actually quite addictive so if you have a four crisps over crisp packet what happens you want more crisps <laughs> If you have one chocolate on Natalie's table, you think, oh, shall I have another one? Because that's what happens, because what's in the food, actually, there's something in the food that makes you want to go back and have more. So your body actually craves it, and you end up eating 50% more when you eat that stuff, okay? Um, the third one, which was like one of my favorites, was eat more plants. So this doctor was saying that plants have 50,000 natural chemicals in them, and basically, when, when he's thinking about plants, it's not only green leafy vegetables or the ones that we automatically think about. Plants are also spices. They're herbs. They are um, things like mushrooms. It's actually a different animal, different, different kinds of animal, different kingdom. It's obviously fungi, but it also has a lot of protein and a fantastic mushrooms. Um, so basically, and they're full of something called polyphenols. And poly, polyphenols are a little bit like, do you remember when you were younger, and we used to play that Pac-Man game. Do you remember that game on the computer? Yeah. So in our body, we have, um, we eat the food, we ingest food and drink. And then basically what happens inside our body is toxins build up and chemicals can build up in our body, okay? And they're called free radicals. And basically what happens is when you eat food that are full of antioxidants, are full of polyphenols, a lot of big words there. Um, basically, they're kind of like the let's say all the naughty things are floating around your stomach and your digestive system, and these polyphenols and antioxidants come along and basically gobble them up. That's what they do. So that's the reason why we recommend that you know, we yogis, life healthy people, that we eat more plant based foods because we know that the plants have prana. Plants have life force, and when we have life force and we eat foods that are alive and have energy, they work with our body because we are part of nature and plants are part of nature. So it's so much more easier to digest plants and then they can go in and take away all these little things like the chocolate and the coffee and the cake and the wine. <laughs> um, and also the most important thing is to have diversity in, in what you're eating. So. They say about like a rainbow plate of, or color, color plate. So when we have salads, isn't it so lovely when you have a salad, and you see red tomatoes and you see green peppers and you see leafy veg and there might be a yellow corn in there. And it just it looks more pleasing on the eye, doesn't it, when there's more colors there. And when you have a diverse range of fruits and vegetables, you're obviously getting more of those 50,000 chemicals, where if you just set broccoli or just uh, onions, it's A, it's a bit boring, and B, you don't get as much vitamins and minerals from that. So we're quite lucky um, for those who are on Zoom. We all live along the Costa del Sol in Spain. And I mean, we're blessed with the, with the nature here and the plants. And we go to an organic lady who's here. If anyone's around, I can give you the number. She lives across from Laguna Village in Estepona. And she has fields and fields of organic vegetables and fruits. Unbelievable. She grows her own. Um, there's actually um melons papayas hanging off the trees lemons limes potatoes tomatoes strawberries vegetables i've never even seen or can't even pronounce she has little flowers that look like little white bells that have, taste like garlic that you can put in your salads she um, has chickens that lay fresh eggs and she has beehives and she's so reasonable so when possible, I mean, I know organic food can be quite expensive if you go to the organic shops, they can be, but there is places along the coast <coughs> here, especially that you can get organic and having organic obviously is much better for the body than having processed foods. Because if we go to all the supermarkets and we look, you know, there's Aldi and Mercadona and, and Little and all these places. And I, I sometimes look at the, at the um, apples and everything and everything is exactly the same. It's not meant to be like that. And they, we're not the same. If you look around the room, some are tall, some are slim, some are more rounded, some have blonde hair, black hair, blue hair, we all have totally different. So why would fruit be exactly the same? It's not meant to be like that. We're not meant to be like that. And actually talking about that, that's another thing. I think there's so much pressure on people to be a certain size and a certain weight and a certain look. Um, and not everybody is meant to look like that 
person on the yoga magazine who has the absolutely perfect body because we all have different situations we have different bones we have different lifestyles we have different mothers and fathers different genetics so i think as yogis we need to be a little bit more aware and to be um to be more kind and accepting to different people's differences so the next one that he was saying that was important for 2024 was um reduce ultra processed foods so he was speaking about breakfast and i know some people love breakfast i mean when i was younger basically i was a terrible eater so i made every single mistake known to man when it comes to diet i was awful i remember i used to eat lots of chocolate i still do by the way but i used to eat more chocolate then than i do now and i basically i played netball for my country and i remember going to netball um training sessions with the squad every weekend and i'd have my water and i used to drink a a bottle of fizzy lemonade can you imagine how awful that was mm -hmm. and i used to eat four bars of chocolate when i was 16. i drank alcohol i ate meat I'm not saying meat is wrong so i don't judge but i'm just saying i did so many things and then as i got older and i basically trained to be a sports and physical education teacher so i studied nutrition in in, in college and then um followed on and did another course in diet and nutrition after that and then i became because I was teaching sports and PE, I, re I saw what was happening when kids were drinking fizzy drinks during the break, because after that, then there would be a nightmare to teach because the sugar levels was going in and they were like all over the place. Um, and even with me, so you kind of get, you start to notice what happens in your body when you eat certain foods. I don't know if you notice when you eat certain things, you know, like we, we know that if we eat too late at night, it's, it affects your digestive system, so you're not going to sleep so well. We know that if we have too much alcohol or too much sugar, it's going to make us feel a bit funny, um, you know, but sometimes we do it because our ego, <laughs> our ego wins, doesn't it? But um, so when they're saying about the ultra processed food to try to limit that, but I think we all kind of know that. And they were saying about the labeling on food, something called a health halo and health halos are like, do you know, when you go to, let's say, for example, the dairy section and they'll have like low fat yogurt reduced your cholesterol reduce it so they're called health halos there it's like false advertising where this low fat low sugar all these kind of anything that says diet low basically that, that's what they're saying is they're trying to attract you to that food because you've been programmed to advertising that low fat and low dairy and low low sugar is actually good for us but usually it's actually the opposite if you're going to have butter have proper butter if you're going to have something sweet have something sweet having like low fat philadelphia and low fat yogurt so that's we added fruit in and sugars and stuff actually worse for you they're worse for you so try to kind of stay away from the ultra processed stuff um and then basically he, okay, he was talking about blood sugar levels. So do you know, every time we eat something, whether it's a carbohydrate or whether it's a sugar, we get an increase in blood sugar levels. So you can measure this if you wear um, a glucose monitor, it's a little machine that you wear. But basically, if you have, let's say a coffee and a cake, your blood sugar is gonna go up. If you have, potatoes or a banana your sugar will still go up but it doesn't go up so quickly because it's more of a long a long lasting carbohydrate where if you if you watch Wimbledon you always notice that the um the tennis players eat a banana in between you ever notice they have bananas and the reason why they have a banana is okay it's fruit and it has got some sugar in it but when you eat a banana yet the sugar the glucose when you the food is taking in the carbohydrate changes to what's called glucose and it's, it's stored in the body's glycogen stores and then that's converted into energy to whatever you're doing if it's movement or if you're thinking or whatever it is that you're doing the energy is sent there but when you eat certain foods it can be spread out nice and evenly where other foods spike the blood sugar levels and when that happens it, insulin kicks in so insulin is a hormone that's kicked in and that sometimes it's not so healthy so when you have too many blood sugar spikes that's what can cause diabetes type 2. Um, and it can be controlled by looking at obviously looking um, out and after your blood sugar levels so just to kind of keep an awareness of that what you're kind of eating and how many times in the day that you're really eating lots of food because when I was younger I used to snack a lot 
And I realized then in hindsight that my blood sugar was constantly spiking, which is actually not really the best thing to do for your body. You're better off to be more stable, eat at certain times, and your body is more controlled and relaxed. So getting on to the next point, stick to an eating window. So this is really interesting because when I read um, Swami Satchitananda's book, he speaks and the yogis for thousands and thousands of years have been using fasting or some form of fasting. So fasting is a big, big thing that's going on at the minute, a big kind of um, big craze. And I did, just before Christmas, I did a three-day fast, a water fast, which I found quite challenging, but it was amazing. Um, but when it comes to fasting, basically, you don't have to even do anything quite intense. You should do something that's really slow and nice and easy. So say, for example, if you don't, let's say you, you don't have your breakfast too early in the morning, and then let's say you have your breakfast at say 11 or 12, and then you eat from between, let's say, 11 and 11 and 12 up to a certain amount of time in the evening time, but not too late at night. The longer the the the, sh the shorter the eating window and the longer the time of rest is actually very beneficial for your body. Okay. There's a fantastic doctor on um she's on social media on YouTube. Her name is Mindy Peltz, is that right? Yeah. Mindy Pelt, and she is kind of like the doctor and master of, of um, we check her out on Instagram or whatever, she's really cool. And they recommend intermittent fasting that you do a window of 12 hours to eight hours, which means for 12 hours, you don't eat um, any food. And then for, for the eating window, you eat food, okay? But the thing about it is when you do that, you get amazing benefits for your body. Because what happens is whenever you eat food, all of your enzymes and your body goes into digesting that food and then your energy can't go to heal or prepare anything else that needs to happen in your body so if you decide to do like a little mini fast maybe have breakfast later don't eat too late at night or do a three-day water fast or do like whatever kind of fast there's many different variations of it what happens is because the body is not ingesting food then the digestive system has time to actually rest. And when the digestive system rests, then the energy, the vital energy, the prana that's inside your body can go and heal diseases and heal ailments that normally can't be healed because the body is so busy working over time to keep eating the food all the time. So in, in yogic terms, they say that um, you will never need to take medicine if you allow your stomach to digest the food that you've already eaten before you put the rep, put more food on top of that food. But the problem in Western society is we, we grab things on the go, we have a coffee and a cake, we're having a business meeting, then we have lunch, then we will go and meet a friend for, and we're constantly putting food, drink on top of our system, and the systems are overloaded, and that's where disease starts. So that brings me to gut health, because your gut health is super important. And we have what's called um, gut flora or gut bacteria inside of our stomach and digestive system. And there are these little things called um, microbiomes. And microbiomes lie in the stomach. And basically what they do is they help to digest and break down all the food in our body and help to support our immune system and everything actually. And basically, depending on what we eat, affects our microbiome. There's things you can do to help increase and improve your microbiome. And one of the things is actually, which I've only found this out actually recently, is to increase the amount of fermented foods that we eat. So there's four Ks, kombucha, let me close my eyes and concentrate, kombucha, kefir, sauerkraut, and kimchi. Kimchi. <laughs> So basically, um, these kind of foods, do any of you eat that kind of stuff? Do you ever eat fermented foods? Yeah, yeah you do, great, good, really good. Red cabbage, kimchi, kombucha, you know, you make it from a scoby and stuff. So the, the recent research from all these top nutrition says, when you do that, it's like getting a big party bus of like the most amazing gut bacteria and bringing it into your belly. And he said, it's like fireworks that, that your gut is so happy with it because they go, oh my God, great. We have all this fermented food. And what it does is it kind of wakes up the digestive system and digestive fire inside of the stomach that is 
normally kind of a little bit more quiet. So I would definitely recommend, I'm going to start um, taking some more fermented foods. Can I just ask a question? Yep. What's your take on um, taking some probiotics? Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you can take, there's probiotics and prebiotics. You So and basically you can take them in a supplement form hundred percent, which is great. Um, I don't know if any of you go for colonic irrigation sometimes. That's another thing. Yeah. yeah. But when you go for colonic irrigation, which is a good way of cleansing your body sometimes, and it's not for everybody, but it definitely can help to clean out the colon. So I go maybe once a season to for clinic irrigation, and they always give you a tablet of probiotics because obviously you need to put the good back the good good bacteria back in. There is supplements you can take that obviously try and get ones that are more natural, ones that are in line with your body, because obviously we want to try to avoid the amount of pills and things that are external as possible, because the more we eat that's based on nature, the more our body's going to be in harmony because we are nature. So when we, I would recommend to try and get it from the natural foods that you eat, but you can get probiotics. I take a probiotic, it's called Sinzino. And basically they test your blood beforehand to see the amount of the levels of what's happening in your body, um, you know, the amount of inflammation in your body. And then you take probiotic and you take a, an oil, which is omega-3 and 6 and 9s, and they test your blood afterwards to test all these things. So there is some really good products that you can take um to help it out but if you do it make sure you choose a good one and you kind of do a bit of research not just the cheaper ones on the supermarket because they can be a little bit um sometimes not so good so i wanted so to speak i could just add that the making something like uh sauerkraut um or anything like that is a thousand percent cheaper and yeah exactly yeah so right. no definitely the thank you so much yeah, natural is definitely better. And, and it's so, so easy to make. Yeah. So I wanted to speak a little bit more about yoga and yoga and uh, yoga principles relating to food. And when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about the yamas and the niyamas, actually. Um, and for those people on Zoom who are not into yoga or whatever, yamas and niyamas are basically like the 10 commandments of the 10 principles of yoga. So we have the yamas, which are basically moral disciplines, what we do in our life to um, have a life that's full of peace and joy and, and love and light and all that lovely stuff. And, and I thought, how does it relate to food? And if we think about the first one is, uh, is, is how you live your life in truthfulness and in nonviolence. OK, and basically in, um, in Sanskrit, that's satya and ahimsa. So when you think about food and the yamas, and think to yourself, truthfully, am I honest with myself about how I eat? Am I honest with myself about my relationship with food? Do I just eat things without thinking? Do I think about how the food, where the food came from? Am I eating it with a good intention? With a, am I in a good space when I'm eating the food? Be truthful with yourself when it comes to eating. Being, being more of a conscious eater rather than just eating. Um, and then ahimsa, nonviolence. So for me, when I when I talk about this, obviously you 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 think I for me I was, I think about animals actually I think about being nonviolent to animals you know so I mean most I must say that every everybody has to be vegetarian because some people like eating meat and some people need to eat meat and so it's a big debate and I don't want to cause an argument over vegetarianism relating to meat because there's a big debate about it um, and Swami Satchidananda is in his book he's very strong in his opinions about vegetarianism um, <clears throat> I'm not quite sure they can hear that I'm zoomed out. Yes, go. Um, the uh, non-violence could be the non-violence to yourself. Hundred percent. So exactly. So so non-violence towards yourself as regarding how you eat. And for me, I just think when I look when I look at the air yantra, and I, this is for those the yantra there, air logo in yoga is truth is one and paths are many. So if we follow that kind of a genetic, then who are we to judge if somebody eats meat or not? That's how I, that's how I personally see it. Because if paths are many, you know, for example, let's say Eskimos that live in igloos, there's no, there's no meat, there's no vegetables there, nothing grows in the ice, so they have to eat meat. Other people who live in certain parts 
of the world, you know, eat meat or eat fish or whatever, and that's their choice. So I think from being a yogi, sometimes we can be a bit judgmental about certain things. And, and you know, when you think, oh, I'm not having that because I'm vegetarian or I'm not having that because I'm vegan. And I think it's nicer or it's better to be more humble and to accept and to, to be more open to how people eat and not to, to judge it so much, yeah? So that's about the, um, the ahimsa. And then the next one is Esteya and Aparigaha. So do you remember all these ones from the, 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 um, the Yamas and the Yamas? Where am I? And so basically talking about like non-hoarding and non-stealing. So basically when we're having food, are we hoarding the food? Are we buying too much food? Do we put too much food on a plate? Do we eat things sensibly? Are we kind when we go for dinner? Do we offer to our friends first? Um, do you know? So when you think about the yamas and the yamas and the way we live, we can actually apply this to how we eat and how we think about food. And then my favorite one is brahmacharya, which is moderation or you know withdrawal of things. In this case, in the yoga sutras, where they're talking actually about sexual lust, but uh, <laughs> but in this case, I'm talking about moderation and food. Because I think when we do everything in moderation, life is much more balanced. Work, rest, play, eat, sleep. Talking about sleep, actually, sleep is super important. And obviously, we all differ on how many hours of sleep we need. I mean, we had a great talk from Dr. Damala there a couple of weeks ago about sleep and the alpha, beta, gamma waves. And in most people need, I mean, six seven eight hours i would say of a week in around because obviously you know some people need less but i personally like to get seven or eight hours sleep a night probably more he doesn't, he doesn't. um and that, actually that's what happens with the body when we sleep the body talking about the gut health the body and the gut needs rest it needs time to not have to do anything and it's in that time like in yoga when we do yoga what's the most important part of yoga savasana we bend forward, we bend backwards, we twist the body, we do spinal twists, which squeezes out the toxins. We lean back, stretches the thyroid gland, we do fish pose, opens up the lungs. We lean forward, we squash the abdominals, we do our um, sun salutation, which affects the ascending colon, transverse colon, <laughs> descending colon. So when we do that, Hatha yoga, the whole practice of Hatha yoga, the whole sequence that's laid out is done especially to help eliminate toxins and chemicals from the body. That's what's so cool about the yoga practices. And then when you add in pranayama and breathing, and then savasana, rest, giving yourself that 10, 15, 20 minutes to do absolutely nothing, that's where the healing occurs, in the nothingness. Because the body has been moved and twisted, and then that's why when we, when we sleep, our body regenerates, so the next morning you have energy to do things. So it's really important to get sleep and really important to um, give your gut time to rest. Okay, so also thinking about the, um, the niyamas. So the niyamas are, did it look through one second? I just kept my little list. Here we are. So observances, for example, like having purity of mind, having um, contentment, um, studying yourself well so we talk about the niyamas in a way is how we live our life but also when it comes to food because if we think about contentment are we content when we eat are we content with what we have on our plate what we have in our fridge one of my pet hates or sins is throwing away food i don't know if you feel like that but i just don't you really dislike throwing away food yeah. it's such a sin no people starving everywhere and actually not getting off the point but people starving everywhere there is plenty of food on the planet to feed people on the planet i think when we all tap into our gut instinct we know that there's plenty of this there's food it's just man's greed and profit margins of companies but there is definitely enough food on the planet and that's the sadness about it but when it comes to an individual um, way of seeing things to have contentment to have joy to have purity of mind and even when it comes to um, self study. Study yourself know how you feel about food know how you what, what, how you are with food, how do you think about it. 
Um, so I want to run, kind of run through a little bit of Swami Satchidananda's book. It's called The Healthy Vegetarian, and it was written many, many, many years ago, I think in the 70s, actually. And this is Swami Satchidananda. This is the guru of, uh, of Era Guru. He's here on the wall. And he was a devout vegetarian and traveled all around the world um, promoting wisdom and peace amongst people. And he had a student called Dean Ornish in his Sangha. And he was a medical doctor. And he was a medical doctor um, who was a yogi student. And he basically wanted to study the effects of living the yogic life and the yogic, the yogic diet and how you breathe and visualization compared to not being that way. And he did some actually clinical studies on it, which was really, really interesting. So the first thing he did was he went into the ashrams and he tested all of the people who lived in ashrams for like blood cholesterol, you know, different things like their cancer rate, their diabetic rates, and, and had a look at their lifestyle. And he found out that obviously when you live that kind of a lifestyle, your your health is normally quite good, depending on your mind, your, how your mind is compared to other people. But then what they did was they in Houston, Texas, they had um, the Plaza Hotel gave them the hotel for a month and he did a study with 48 people and he split them into two groups and these these 48 people were on the list to have surgery on their hearts. They all had heart problems and they came in these 48 people for one month in the hotel and half of them he let them just eat as they did and live their life as they did and the other half they, they put on a strict diet of vegetables fruit meditating every day doing hatha yoga doing pranayama doing visualization working on healing and basically 95 percent of the people who did that didn't need surgery anymore and cured themselves of all their ailments it's a clinical study which is really cool in amazing month. in a month in a month right and this was in the 90 i think it was 1977 this happened right so swami sachidananda basically um big advocate for vegetarian vegetarianism and basically i want to talk about a few little different things so he was saying that when you look back don't shoot the messenger i'm just saying what he was saying because it's going to be a bit of a bone of contention about the meat versus the thing versus the vegetables but he was saying that when you look at the human body and you look at how the human body is how our teeth are, how our intestines are, how our eye, eyesight is, that actually we are geared very much for, towards being vegetarian. And the reason why he says that, I'm just gonna read a couple of lines here. He says that, um, what, is the, what, the, what is the natural diet for human beings? When we look at the diet of mammals, we find two major groups, the flesh eating animals, such as dogs, cats, tigers, and lions, and the vegetarian animals such as cows, bulls, horses, camels, monkeys, and even the largest land animal, the elephant. Comparing their physical features, the flesh eating animals have long teeth to tear the raw animal flesh from the bones, which the vegetarian animals all have flat teeth for grinding vegetable food. Meat eating animals have rough tongues to lick the flesh from the bone and sharp, strong claws to catch and kill their prey, while vegetarian animals do not. The meat eaters also have excellent night vision for hunting, while the vegetarians have more difficulty seeing after dusk. This is just the external features that can be seen. There are others which we cannot see. For example, the intestines of meat eating animals are only two to three times their body length. This means that the meat that they eat can pass through their system quickly before it putrefies. Vegetarian animals' intestines are about six or seven times their body length because their systems need not to push the food through so rapidly. The vegetarians have a different pH in their saliva and their stomachs than the meat eaters. And vegetarians also have digestive enzymes in their saliva and begin digesting while the food is still in the mouth, while meat eaters tend to have to um, gulp and chew their food more so. So this was his way of seeing um, how the difference is between the meat eating anatomy and the, the obviously vegetarian. But then he goes on and he talks about the effect of food on the body and the mind. And so somebody asked him, how do you think we could ever stop a war? 
And he said that a lot of the wars could be stopped if you sent all the soldiers, plants, vegetarian food, got them to breathe. He said, and I would stop many of the wars in the, in the world. And I thought that was really quite funny. Um, but anyway, so moving on from that, basically he goes into the difference between protein and meat and animals, but we can get plenty of protein from things like beans, lentils, chickpeas, quinoa, all these sorts of things. Um, and then basically he's talking about, yeah, yogic arrogance when it comes to vegetarianism. I think we mentioned this before about accepting people, whatever they eat. We, as yogis, we don't want to have an arrogance. We want to be humble. So for example, my boyfriend loves meat. And I, until I was 25, I ate meat. So I'm not going to judge anybody if we eat meat. You know, I, I ate meat for many years of my life. I've chosen not to now, but when I cook for my boyfriend, I'm a bit like Natalie and she always mentions about Shanky, he eats all the meat and I eat all the veg, <laughs> you know? And when he comes, I mean, he always eats salads and, and healthy things. He'll have the veg, but he doesn't feel, he doesn't feel as if his meal is complete unless he has a bit of meat on his plate and that's okay. So I cook it for him and I give it to him with love because if I want, if I was being arrogant and said, I'm not cooking that because I'm vegetarian, what kind of a yogi does that make somebody? This is not kind, is it? It's not kind. So I think we have to be really aware of that. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so we're talking a little bit here about how much food should we eat? Or, so, yeah, how much food should we eat? It's been proven that most diseases start from the gut. And the reason they start from the gut is because we eat too much food or too much of a portion size or at the wrong times in our in our daily life. And you can get away with that sometimes. I mean, I think personally, I think food is to be enjoyed. I love eating. I mean, after this, I probably will go for, go for a tapper with some of my friends. I don't know. Um, you know, why not? Because it's part of life. I think food can be such a joy. It can be such a beautiful thing, no? It's a social event. It's so nice to get there with your friends and everything. So I don't think food has to be feared. I think we have to see food like you see life. How do you want to see life? You want to see it with joy. You want to see it with enjoyment and fun and see it as a positive thing and not to fear it, but to be aware and have some consciousness as regard the food. Um, they were saying, he, Swami Sachinanda was saying that during World War II, when there was a food shortage, that lots of the hospitals were, obviously they weren't um, empty with the soldiers, they were in like the soldier hospitals, but basically though, because there was a food shortage, that there was hardly any patients in the hospitals. Because what, yeah, because when people overeat and things mainly, lots of this, think of the main diseases in life, heart disease, diabetes, strokes, cancers, Alzheimer's, dementia. That's the, maybe the top six you'd say, yeah? More or less. Mm -hmm. Been scientifically proven that it's related to how we eat. Sugar, 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 yeah. Sugar, addiction to sugar and sugar spikes and constant. Carbohydrates. And carbohydrates, exactly. So he speaks about the digestive fire in the stomach. And when you look at Ayurveda, people have different ways. There's, a bit, uh, there's three different, I'm not going to go into the whole, the whole thing of it, but basically we are all different people. Some of us like certain things. Some of us love doing yoga. Some of us prefer to walk on a beach. Some of us like, you know, adrenaline, jumping over a plane. Some of us prefer to meditate. Everybody is totally different. And our digestive system is totally different. And our preferences are totally different. So, and I think that's the beauty about food is just to really accept and enjoy people's differences. And again, not to judge them so much. Um, so basically, he's talking about when to eat. And I know we, we touched a little bit on there about the fasting, but even the yogis thousands and thousands of years ago, they knew that it was not good to eat too late at night. Because when you eat too late at night, this food is in the stomach and it's trying to digest. And actually when you, the digestive system works because you're sitting up at a table. Yeah? When you lie down horizontally, the digestive system can't work correctly because it's in the wrong position. 
So the stomach is the, the food is all large and the enzymes don't work correctly. How can you go to the toilet correctly? Because everything is in the wrong way. So, you know, really recommend. I think it's quite challenging sometimes, especially when people are asking you for dinner at night. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I think, think yeah, exactly. So like yeah, eating. so <laughs> so Sarah dinner. sings sings in the nighttime, so she has dinner and eats at very strange times, and that must be quite difficult for you. So, um, unless you were you decided to eat earlier and don't eat late at night, if you have a big a big healthy lunch or pre dinner before you go, it'll be the best thing for you. But so if you're aware, eating really late at night is not good. Um, and then thinking about when you want to meditate and when you want to be in connection with your spirit and connection with your mind, the lighter you eat, when we go on retreats, even with Natalie, we go on retreats with anybody, they always say, try to eat light, don't eat too heavy. And there's a reason for that, because when you eat heavy, you know, food coma, <laughs> we all know it, especially after Christmas dinner, we're all sitting there <laughs> after having the Christmas yeah. dinner. And then well, look, think what we do as Western people, we go to a restaurant, first of all, we have bread, yeah. It comes out that's hot with butter on it, right? And if you know you're hungry, it's such a temptation, isn't it? The bread, right? And the bread is usually not brown and wholemeal, it's usually white and fluffy and like not good, but we're so hungry yeah. and our ego kicks in and we have the bread and the butter. There'll probably be two of them. That's the way just for next door. Then you have yourself a start or whatever that you might think you're being healthy and having a salad, a goat's cheese salad, or maybe you're having a soup. Then you have your main course, whatever that may be, vegetarian or meat. Then you'll think, ah, oh, I'll have a glass of wine, I might have a beer. Then you think, we have a cake, because you know it's a three course menu, obviously. You have the cake. Then what you do, throw a coffee on top. Now, can you imagine what you, what like what has to happen? That's a lot of stuff going on there. It's a lot of stuff, isn't it? And your body is trying to break down carbohydrates, proteins, extract the minerals, extract. It's an overdrive for your body. And then you probably go for dinner or whatever time. I mean, I don't like eating late at night, but you know, sometimes people say we meet at eight or meet at nine. I'm thinking, no, I want to be in my pajamas and on the sofa. Yeah. But it's so late to eat, isn't it? And in Spain, especially, to eat that late. Listen, it's going to happen sometimes. And I don't say no to social events because I love restaurants and I love going out. But I try to go earlier in the day. I try to go early evening time. Mm -hmm. So I'm home beforehand and I, I tend, I find it kind of works better. Where if I go for an Indian and it's nine or 10 at night, mm -hmm. it's not the stomach, the spices, the herbs, like it's it's like a fireworks going on in there, isn't it? The noises that happens, it's not. And then it creates gas, then it creates flatulence, it creates mucus. Your mind can sleep well when you sleep, when you eat late at night because there's too much going on. And then when it comes to meditating or if you want to get yourself into um, visualization, if you eat something really heavy, I used to think it was the opposite, but I realized it's not actually. I used to eat food, let's say my lunch or something, and then I would um, sit and I think, oh, I'll try to meditate now. And then what would happen was I'd be so going slipping into a food coma that I think, oh, but I'd end up falling asleep. Yeah, and I thought this was good, but it actually isn't good because what was happening was all the energy was going to the food because it's trying to break down all the things that's going on. And then the body only has a certain amount of prana, a certain amount of vital force. So it says, we better break the, down this food really and, and ignore the mind because we can't focus on that till we sort this out. So you end up falling asleep. That's why on retreat or when you want to meditate, it's better not to eat so heavy. So when you eat light, you know, like even when you have like salads or you have soups, it's actually better, it's easier to meditate and it's easier to connect to the divine because when your body is light, your, your soul is light, your mind is light, everything is lighter. You know, it's easier to kind of get there, isn't it? Don't you find that? So just to be aware of that. Um, <clears throat> what else? I think I know you have one or two more minutes left. But anyway, so he's talking about making changes slowly. It's, it's difficult to... Um, to just all of a sudden change your how you eat and how you think about food and i think one of the most important yogic principles is to be kind to yourself be kind to yourself and say to yourself okay so what can i do to make changes slowly definitely increase the water intake because you can't really you know you're not going to drown are you you know if you drink more water it's drink more water because that's probably one of the most basic things drink good quality alkaline antioxidant good water that's the first thing second thing breathe every day first thing you get up in the morning do 10 deep breaths 
before you go to sleep, 10 deep breaths. Try to remember to breathe. Plants and fruits. Try to eat more near nature. If you, if you have that basically correct and you live your life in the what's called the 80-20 rule where 80% of the time you're really good and 20% of the time you allow yourself to be naughty, not the other way around. Excluding Christmas. Excluding Christmas <laughs> and New Year and birthdays. And what's your opinion on plant-based um, milks, proteins, uh, burgers? And yeah, okay. So, so I'm going to be. If she that's, asked, that's very, um, what's my opinion on plant-based, uh, like these Beyond Burgers mm. and um, Linda McCartney vegetarian sausages mm. and stuff like that? You know what I'm talking about, right? So, my opinion is that they are processed. Um, if you want to eat plant-based stuff, eat plants, yeah. eat broccoli, eat carrots, have a salad, have a stir fry, have add in quinoa, add in nuts, add in seeds, add in flax seeds, add in beautiful, beautiful things. The, beyond, I mean, I've, I've tried them all because it's just out of interest, but you kind of know when you're eating them. Well, if you actually just read the packet, look at the back of the packet right and then if there's things on the back of the packet that you can't pronounce you know these things you can't pronounce these words they're full of emulsifiers gums additives colorings preservatives everything's in there and there's usually big long words these words that you can't pronounce that's because they're not good so i would not i would i don't think they're the best to tell you the truth i don't i wouldn't really recommend them to tell you the truth i think it's better to if you're going to eat a plant eat a plant that looks like a plant not to eat it in a kind of a processed form. Plus, think of it, they've been processed and then probably put in a package in a shelf in Iceland or the supermarkets for how many months? Yeah. It's not really, yeah. we want to eat food that's live. That's why when you eat, when you buy your fruits and vegetables, you know if it's organic. Well, after a couple of days, it starts going funny. It starts going mm -hmm. limp. Mm -hmm. If you juice green vegetables, you're better off eat, drinking that vegetable juice or fruit juice, but vegetable juice is better because it's more alkaline. The, the, the fruit you want to be more sugary, which can cause havoc on the So Fruit is great, but you have to be careful with fruit. Better to eat fruit in its whole form, because if you juice it, you're taking away this um, the, the fiber on the edge and then it's a, it's a huge blood sugar spike. Also, it's the enzymes in your mouth. If yeah. you, it, starts to digest if in, you eat the fruit, exactly. you have it as a smoothie, it goes in. Yeah, and exactly, sure exactly. So, um, I'm not to lose my train of thought, yes, yes to, the, to the plants, so try to eat them in their natural form. And actually, what's really cool about plants is, I saw this little link on, on Instagram the other day, if you look at mushrooms, mushrooms are like ears, aren't they? And they're really good for your hearing. If you see a, a tomato, when you open a tomato, it kind of looks like the shape of a heart, because it's good for... And we look at broccoli or cauliflower, it looks like a brain. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. And when they do research, actually, they're proving that the, the vegetables, that the shape and the color and actually look like the organs. So when you eat fruits and vegetables in that form, it's going to go right into your body. So I would say probably. Just, okay. And then what's your opinion on frozen? Okay. Good question. So I've done a bit of research on the frozen thing, right? And basically, it depends on the quality of the frozen fruit compared to the organic, the ones you buy in the vegetable. Some frozen fruits and vegetables can actually be quite good, mm -hmm. right? And the reason is because even with fish, people who eat fish or people who eat fruits and vegetables, look, if you can, of course, it's always best in an ideal world to go to an organic place, you know, get your vegetables from the ground and cook it within the next few days. That's ideal. Yeah, but people sometimes can't do that, especially if they don't live near an organic farm or they live in England or they haven't got the money to do that. So the frozen ones can actually have a quite high vitamin and mineral content because what happens is when the fruit and vegetables picked or the fish is taken from the sea, it's frozen directly that moment. Mm -hmm. And when it's frozen directly that moment and put in the freezer, it can maintain and keep the vitamins and the minerals so actually they can be quite good and they're frozen very quickly and they're frozen so quickly so it can keep, so we can keep the vitamins ideally it's best to have straight of course but i mean it's just i think it's okay depending on so many qualities of water so many qualities of milk so many qualities of frozen fruits so i can't say in every case depends on the particular one so i want to to finish off because it's actually five past seven um I want to read the conclusion of what Swami Sachidananda says about diet, okay? We learn many things from animals and birds. They eat simple, 
natural food and never have to go to the doctor. They never need pills for constipation or insomnia or to get rid of gas. It is because they live according to nature. Gandhi used to say very often, go back to nature. You will enjoy everything that is good in life. Our society has become unnatural in so many respects. Our food is artificial, our dress is artificial, even so much of our overthinking has become artificial. That is why we have so many problems, personal, interpersonal, national and international. The aim of yoga is to go back to nature as much as possible to lead a natural life with simple food, simple dress and simple living. Then naturally the mind will always go to high thinking. Once we start living simply, we will have the time to think high and so easily solve all of our personal and world problems. Let there be a limitation in everything and a tranquility in everything. As the Bhagavad Gita says, Yoga is not for the person who eats too much, nor the one who fasts excessively. Going to extremes can sometimes be easier, but take the middle path, and that is what is needed for a life of health and peace. Let us think in a peaceful way, eat in a peaceful way, and let all of our actions be done in this spirit, so we have a life that is easeful, peaceful, and useful.